We grew up in a loving Christian home in Michigan where we went to church on Sunday, sometimes twice. I attended catechism, Sunday school, and also went to a Christian school for the first couple grades. So you could pretty much say religion was all around me, but I knew the stories of the Bible. I just didn't really know the Bible. I didn't really know the truth, but I was young yet. I remember when my brother and I were six and seven years old, we'd be playing in the yard and one of us would tell the other one a story uh, or maybe something we did and my brother or I would not believe him and we'd be like, yeah, when I get to heaven, I'm gonna ask God if you're lying. Luke 18, 17 says, truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. It's just amazing to me now that I look back that I, our faith was unquestionable, as if morals were woven into our hearts. Hebrews 10.16 says, I will put the laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. Well, as I got older, uh, the world would start to take over, you know, teenage stuff. My Sunday life was just that. It was just Sunday, maybe for one hour to make God or my parents happy. I uh, really can't remember back then. Just going with the flow. <clears throat> so I thought I had a good life with God just because I would chat with him once in a while. But did I know his truth? I don't think so. I was lukewarm. I probably wasn't even lukewarm. I was more just not involved. Just acknowledged God. Pretty much all my friends knew I went to church, but they didn't really like associate it with me. They didn't ask questions about it. They just probably knew it was something I had to do because my parents made me do it. I can actually say it was very rare I even touched a Bible, let alone read it or tried to understand it. I hear this a lot from lukewarm Christians that uh, they just don't understand the Bible when they read it and it was the same for me. I just didn't understand that. Why is this book so hard to read? All through my 20s I was just doing anything to have fun just like any other young kid. Drugs and alcohol didn't seem like a wise choice so I generally stayed away from that. I tried it probably a few times but it just wasn't for me. It was mostly material things or women. If I could just date her, I'd be happy. If I had that sports car, I'd be happy. If that dirt bike was in my in my hands, I'd that would be the best. Just toys, toys, toys. The man who dies with the most toys still dies. Or is it the man who dies with the most toys wins? I think not. At the age of 33, I met my future bride. We dated for a little under a year, and we got baptized together in Lake Michigan, and we got married. She had two kids of her own, which I would make mine. At that point, I'd already started going to church regularly, so I introduced them, and we all started going to church as a family. Around 2015, I started journaling. This is really the first time I, have, I had ever journaled. I had some random notes, uh, things I, that God may have whispered to me, things that I just heard in a sermon that were speaking to me. In 2017, I had a note saying I needed my relationship back with God. I wanted that relationship I had when I was a teenager where I just talked to him all the time when I was by myself driving or walking. I actually remember typing that note to this day. Other notes in 2017 would say stuff like, God told me he wanted more of my time. The next note would say, geez, it's been a year since I've even talked to God or wrote a note down. Then I had some random notes of church sermons, and then a few months would go by, and I had one more note written about God saying for us to pray with some friends of ours that were having a life struggle. I really felt strongly about this prayer and felt we needed to do this as soon as church was done. 
At the end of the service, my family and I gathered around these friends and prayed, prayed pretty deeply, probably the most sincere prayer I felt since, well, ever. <clears throat> this prayer and note was from 2019, towards the beginning. Sadness and anger start to enter my mind around this time. Just taking a wide look around the globe and seeing all the bad things happening to good people. But the weird thing was, there was nothing really bad in our lives. Our, our family was doing great, we were getting along, no problems, um, no sicknesses, kids were wonderful. Had a good job, so I, I don't, it was, it was everything else around me, it was not me that was causing me to just, just to start feeling this anger. I was feeling this anger so much that within the next few months I just stopped going to church. And I felt completely fine about it. Then COVID hit. The world had stopped and it was a different world outside. It's usually at this point in someone's life where something tragic happens that they just completely let go. I had let go previously to this, so it actually made me question again, where was God in this? And just furthered my argument for not even caring anymore. I just went along with the flow and just filled myself with being a busybody, just doing anything to keep myself busy and just looking for my own pleasures. I was atheist, if you will, maybe agnostic. Uh, the point was, I just didn't care, so it really didn't matter. In 2021, my wife, daughter, and I decided to move to Florida. Not necessarily for a new start, but just to get out of the cold weather. I didn't really want to go as we had family and friends back home, but I really wanted a new challenge. Basically something to fill another void. <clears throat> I would fill my days with fishing, mountain biking, paddle boarding, trips to the beach, you name it. Anything that had to do with just keeping myself busy and my mind busy. Although I had thought about it, I never deleted those notes out of my phone that were pertaining to God and, and uh, church notes. They would get pushed down my list though so I wouldn't see them. So that might have been why I didn't delete them. I just never saw them on my phone again. Somewhere around... 2023 uh, interests in my mind began to change. I didn't know why. It could have been more stuff going on in the world. It could have been I was bored with whatever I was doing to keep myself busy. I needed new material to listen to at work while I was working. I started getting back into history. I always loved history but haven't really caught up on it in a while. Stuff I haven't ever looked into was the fall of Rome or Hitler or any of the countries that had extreme depression and fault. Around that time, a friend sent me a YouTube link to a video from a pastor out in California. This was uh, titled The Days of Deception. And it talked about some, not necessarily alien activity, but demonic activity. And I thought, yeah, this would be a good listen. You know, it was kind of a funny title. I'm like, yeah, we'll just, we'll just listen to it and see what happens. This wasn't an uh, email sent directly to me, it was a mass email, but I haven't listened to any, uh, any sermons in a while, so I decided to give it a listen. After watching this video, I decided I needed to read the Bible to test this pastor against what he was talking about. Somewhere along this time frame, I started feeling heavy convictions from this uh, sermon he was preaching about. When you watch one thing on YouTube, you start to get similar stuff uh, coming up in your feed, so that led me to start listening to other sermons. I found myself watching sermons on YouTube uh, left and right, just from one to another. I started questioning again if God really did exist. Then a video came up of a uh, pastor that had a similar experience as I did, where he was pretty secular in his young age, lukewarm Christian, and decided to just not believe anymore. His little sister kept bugging him to come to church. And around 19 years old, he decided he had to get his sister off his back. 
So we decided to attend church and uh, just show her that God didn't exist. At the end of the sermon he was at, they did an altar call. He went up front just to settle things once and for all. He looked up in the sky and said what the pastor said, God, if you're real, I will give you 100% of my life. He said this because he knew there was no God, so what, what's it going to hurt? It's not going to affect him anything, anyhow. Well, that person that said that prayer has been a pastor for the last 12 years. Later on that week, I decided to do the same prayer. It was something like, God, if you're real, I will not give you 10%. I will not give you 50%. I will give you 100%. Show me what you got. I was sincere about it, just like uh, that pastor was that I saw in the video. I had some fear and discernment going on in my mind, so that could have been part of it. Proverbs 9.10 says, The fear of God is the beginning of knowledge and wisdom. This is not the same fear you would get from your first time on a roller coaster. This is more of a healthy fear, and it's hard to explain that. Within the next few days, I found myself wanting to read the Bible more and more. Then I started watching more online sermons. Then I started reading the Bible, comparing it to the online pastors. Then I started comparing the one pastor to another pastor, and it was just, it filled my life. Luke 13 says, If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And then ask God to anoint me with the Holy Spirit. It's really hard to explain, but at this point, I felt all my time was going to be devoted to God. In the mornings before work, I would pray in silence. I'd go do a devotion with my wife. I'd go off to work. I'd throw the ear pods in. I'd start listening to sermons. I'd listen to audiobook. I'd get home. I'd jump back into the Bible. Everything I read was becoming so clear and truthful. It was the first time I really felt truth in my life. God has a way of making up time, lost time. I had learned so much in just five months. My conversations at work would turn from fishing and biking and sometimes people come up to me with rude jokes to uh, Bible sermons I had heard. So most people would walk away from me at work. <laughs> Came home, I deleted all my secular music and replaced it with worship music. If you knew me personally, you would know that that would have been one of the hardest things for me to do in my life since I loved my heavy metal. I'm not saying you have to do that, but it's something I felt God saying, just get rid of it all, you don't need it. I was a completely different person and my family and friends could see it. I was starting to see the Bible come to life and how accurate it was, how prophetic it was, and how alive it is. As of today, I have no doubt in my mind, God is real, God is not dead. The cool thing is, my best friend in Ohio, that I've been sharing this with, had the same encounter around the same time. So we are both uh, being led by the Spirit together, so I have a really good uh, friend to chat with some of this stuff on, which is just probably just the awesomest thing. My prayer for you today is to ask God for the anointing of the Holy Spirit and to tell him to lead your life 100%. You will then see the blessings I'm talking about. My love for Jesus is undeniable, but my understanding of his love is overjoyous. Thank you for watching, and God bless.